the revelation from Jesus Christ. By the way, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Revelation chapter 1 and you can see it right up close. The revelation um, from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servant what must soon take place. He made it known by sending an angel to his servant, um, John, who testifies to everything that he saw. This is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads out loud the words of this prophecy. Ha, I just rocked it. I'm reading it out loud. I get a blessing from it. I, guys, I'm listen. If you if you second guess this stuff, then you, then yeah, you 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 need to believe it, claim it, absolutely. Okay, don't don't water it down or anything like that. <clears throat> blessed the one who reads out loud the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it. So you get a blessing because you are hearing it. Now I'll tell you, I think the big ultimate blessing is for those who take to heart what is written in it. So, you know, uh, is there really a blessing just for reading it out loud? Okay, you're missing the boat. That's, that's what I'm trying to imply here, okay? You need to take this at heart. If Jesus has said it, if it's the word of God, you buy it. You buy it. Buy stock in it, okay? Don't question it. Don't doubt it. Do it. The one who, who, um, uh, who takes it to heart, what is written in it, because the time is near, John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come. God is eternal. He's pointing this out. No questions. Are we talking about God like, like who was and is and who was to come? Yes, yes, we are. Grace and peace to you from him who was and is and who is to come. And from the seven spirits. Now, we talked about this. Jeff, are there actually seven spirits? different spirits i thought there was just the one holy spirit well we looked at this passage from isaiah what was it 11 i think 11 2 where he's talking about the one holy spirit but he gives like seven different aspects of the holy spirit um i i you know i remember the last one is the one who who has the fear of the lord you know part of the holy spirit so you get that holy spirit so there there's not seven holy spirits or seven spirits. Nowhere else in the Bible does it say that anywhere. The thing of it is, is Paul, oh my lands, guys, Paul was educated. He was Jewish. He knows these things. He knows the book of Isaiah backwards and forwards. He knows that that Isaiah repeats itself. It's three different tellings of, of the, 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 the coming of Christ. And he knows this. And so he says there in Isaiah chapter 11, he says, listen, the number seven means that it, it's everything that is needed. It's the cup that isn't lacking anything. And so when he describes the Holy Spirit, you know, having seven different aspects, he's saying, you know, the Holy Spirit, that is all you need. The Holy Spirit that isn't lacking in anything. The Holy Spirit who can help you, equip you, make you strong, who can convict you, who can, you know, all of the, put the things in your mind that you need to remember when you need to remember it. The kind of Holy Spirit that will, will, will give you the strength to stand up and say, you know what, I'm not going to denounce Christ. Even if you want to chop my head off, I'm not doing that. That kind of powerful Holy Spirit. That's what this is saying. Don't get confused about that. It's one Holy Spirit. He's just basically saying the fullness, all-empowering Holy Spirit. Do y'all got that? All-empowering Holy Spirit. Listen, if you have questions, if you have a comment, raise your hand. Raise your hand. If I miss you, if I don't see you, <clears throat> start grunting, making noise, stand on your chair if you need to, okay? All right. So the seven spirits, yeah, take your shoes off first, that's right, before the throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, by the way, who can tell me for an extra cookie you get to take home tonight, what is the other word for witness that we talked about last week? And most people don't know that it means that. What is it? You just make me so happy. <laughs> just, I get chills, like, yay, they were listening. Okay, the word martyr. Guys, do you know the word martyr did not mean somebody who dies for the faith? That is not the definition of martyr. The definition of martyr is a witness. 
It's just a witness, giving witness to God, giving witness to Christ. The thing of it is, is there were so many witnesses who were being killed for their faith that they, they just associated the two words together, so they became synonymous. A martyr, when you hear that word martyr, oh, they died a martyr's death. Um, what's his name? Symbol? No, no. Oh, I got all kinds of names went through my head. What was his name there in north of Australia? Jim Elliott died a martyr's death. They killed him. He was going to tell them about Jesus, and they killed him. And the thing of it is, is afterwards, and his wife came and said, no, I'm not mad. He, he loved you. He wanted to tell you about Jesus. And he all said, oh, our bad. And they all became Christians. Woohoo! That was awesome. Jim Elliott up in heaven going, you rock girl, you know, and stuff to his wife and everything else. Okay, y'all get that? But a martyr is a witness. <clears throat> From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. We'll talk about this. Make sure I don't go past it. Guys, there are going to be people that are resurrected. Everyone's going to be resurrected. Absolutely everybody's going to be resurrected. Jesus was resurrected. There are going to be people that are resurrected early on. You want to be one of those people who are resurrected early on. Because there will be people that will be resurrected during the, um, I can't say the name of it, Brett, um, the millennia, the thousand year reign. You know, they, they will be there and God will resurrect them. And when the, the battle takes place and everything else, you know, most people believe that they're going to be the ones that are standing there fighting for the battle. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Some people wonder, says, well, what about the people that were early, early on? You know, are they not going to be raptured out of there? And so they'll be in heaven and they won't um, be resurrected because they're going to be in heaven. Um, and, and is that not talking about the Jewish people that are going to be left on earth that are, are killed when they turn to, to believe in Jesus Christ? And, and, and they're going to be killed. And when this happens, they're going to be the ones that are going to be resurrected. Uh, and to that, I'll just simply say, yeah, that's a great question. Because you know what? I don't think it's perfectly clear. And a lot of people believe pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. And you're like, what, what do you mean trib? And, and we're just talking tribulations. Is there a rapture? A lot of people believe that, that it says very clearly in the Bible that there's a rapture. They read um, Paul's writings to the church in Thessalonica. And they say, oh, rapture, 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 and other stuff. And people sit there and say, well, when does that rapture take place? Some people say, dude, we won't have to experience any of that because the church will be raptured. This is about the Jews. And to that, I sit there and I say, well, I'm glad you have that opinion. And you know what? I, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. My point, and what Brett and I keep going back and forth about, is, um, you know what? My biggest thing is, Brett, tell them, what is my biggest thing? What, what, do, what do I want people to, to, to do, you know, in, in, in regards to, like, the book of Revelation? Do you, do you know what I'm asking you? Do you know? Why? What do I want them to be obsessed about other than like, like this seal means that and that seal means that? I, I, I want to be obsessed, but I don't want to so much be obsessed about a seal or a bowl. I want to be obsessed about what? Do you know what I'm asking? Yeah, we've had the conversation, Brian. What, what, what's the answer? With that, if you know. Yeah, yeah I, I, be ready. Just be ready. Who, who you, you know, if you're ready, you don't have to worry about what the seals or the bowls or this or that or any of those sorts of things. And if reading the book of Revelations inspires you to get ready, which I think it should, or scares the daylights out of you, say, ah, Lord, I repent, I repent, I repent, good. Okay, good. I have no problems with that. But guys, my, my, my comment to you and, and my comment to Brett over the last three or four years that I've known him is, you know, a man, I can spend a lot of time thinking about this and whatever and even preaching about it or whatever else. But quite frankly, I would rather just convince people to be ready. Because if you're ready, you're good. Now, is it interesting? 
you know, is it fun? Is there a blessing for trying to, to read it and understand? Yes, 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 and yes, and so we will do that. But guys, here's the bottom line. Be ready. Just be ready. And you're all good. Do the work of a disciple. When Jesus comes back, or when we get raptured, or whatever it is that it looks like, which I don't think, you know, we can be 100%. Now, I'll tell you, most evangelical, Bible-believing Christians believe that there is going to be a rapture that is pre the big, horrible, horrible, hard, terrible stuff that's going to happen. The bowls and the trumpets and the plagues and the chipmunks and the... You know, I, I, yeah. So... <laughs> And you know what? If that's the case, fine. But you want to know what? I mean, honestly and truly, if we are here having to go through all the tribulation, if they come and they sit there and say, hey, listen, you renounce Jesus or I'm cutting your head off. I'm like, hey, have fun with that. Go ahead. Here, you want me to stretch it out for you? Because I'm not. And as soon as you do that, I'm going to be in the kingdom. So, na 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 boo boo or whatever they say, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you have questions? Can I help clarify that? I'm not, I, I can't think of it from your perspective because I've never been you. And I don't know where you are with your thinking and your ideology of all of this. Do you have a question for me about this? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That's the scary thing. Now, let me say, let me say this to you. John just used that number seven, and we talked about it a few seconds ago. What was John saying had seven aspects? What, what, what is that, that, that thing that John says there are seven aspects? It's very, very complete. It's everything that you need. What is that? Now listen to me. If you are being legit, I think the Holy Spirit will, say, will, will, will put it on your mind. Yes, you are not perfect. Yes, you are saved by grace. But there is nothing that you have put in your life above me. The Holy Spirit, because he is good, he is faithful, he is loving, I think he'll do that. But I want to tell you something. At the same time, I believe all the time, in, 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 across the country and, and, and around the world, the Holy Spirit is speaking to people saying, listen, I get it, you're a fan. I get it. You're a fan, but, but you're not, you know, um, I'm a fan, not a, what was that book called? Y'all know, somebody read that book. What is it? Not a fan. Who wrote that book? Good book. Not a fan. Listen, guys, we're not called to be fan. It's not to be like Jesus, pro or not pro. That doesn't cut it. Is Jesus Lord? Is Jesus number one in your life? If you claim to be a follower of Christ and you see in his word or you see, you feel, you, you sense from his Holy Spirit. And by the way, the Holy Spirit will never, ever, ever, ever contradict God's word. That is the devil. That is the devil. I hear people say that all the time. Oh, the, the, the Holy Spirit told me. And, and I'm like, um, dude, you know that contradicts the Bible, don't you? Yeah, but the Holy Spirit. No, no, that wasn't the Holy Spirit that you're listening to. You're listening to a deceiving spirit. If you don't think that there are deceiving spirits out here, go hop on a plane and go to Africa. You will see them because they'll be, they'll be shrieking out of people. And they'll sit there and they'll, they'll, they'll call you names and they'll tell you things about you that they should never, never, ever, 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 ever know. Anything and everything. Don't watch these movies on TV, by the way. It irritates the daylights. Why would you entertain that crap? But that stuff that's going on there is going on over there. It's going on over there. They don't have a problem because, dude, they already know, ah, there's a devil and he's out to get us or whatever else. They, they already know that. Dude, if, if the devil was doing that stuff here in America, everybody would be in church on Sundays. The devil doesn't want that. So he's not going to reveal himself that way. But my point is this, Debbie. If the Lord is not number one in your life, the Holy Spirit, if you are being genuine with him, 
Lord, are you? Lord, seek. I love this prayer. I love this prayer. Why don't we pray this every single Sunday? Somebody needs to say, Jeff, you haven't prayed the prayer. And we'll say, okay, yeah, you're right. Let's stop. Lord, look and search me and seek me and see if there's any unclean way in me. Lord, see if there's anything in here that's not been revealed to you. Lord, are you not number one in my life? And if you are not number one in my life, will you show me and reveal it to me now? And then when he does that, we have a choice to make. We have a choice to make. No, I really like my money uh, more. Lord, you, you know, you're know, you probably third or whatever else, and I, I'm going to assume that's good enough because I'm not like the people that are on Channel Fox 59 at, you know, 18 hours of news that they show, right? I'm not like those people. I'm not the, I'm not the guy who ripped off all the people in Carmel, the money investment guy. I'm not, I'm not any of those guys. I'm a good guy. I'm, 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 I am sure I am better than 97% of the rest of the people. That, that, doesn't, that, that means nothing, nothing, nothing. Debbie, that scares me. What you said is just absolutely right. And so I have to ask the Lord, Lord, you know, are, you know have I allowed anything to come into my life and enter my life that has taken the place of you in my life? And if so, please, please reveal it to me so that I can confess it, repent of it, and put you back in the position where you belong in my life. Can somebody say amen to me on that? That's it. That's it. That's a daily thing. What did Paul say? I need to what to myself daily? What did he say? I need to what to myself daily? Die to ourselves daily. Lord, if there is something in me, the old man's creeping up. Oh, put to death the old man. I hate that old man. That old man should be dead by now. Oh, but he keeps trying to creep up. Well, then down with you, Satan. You know, you, you, you know what I'm saying, right? So it is, it is a daily sort of a thing. Dad, what were you going to say? We're going to repent. That's right. And he didn't want that. His so heart. he was looking exactly just for himself and not to win other people in essence. But it is equal to in us for our motivation and why we are doing things. That's one of the most awesome things I've heard you say, you know, in church. I, Guys, we, we can sit there and say that, well, I go to church. I do this. I'm doing all of these right things. But what is it that's in here? What is it that's in here? Because the thing of it is, is I suspect that Jonah was, was faithful and obedient to God in 98% of the areas of his heart. But there was this one area. And I really, truly believe, I want to get on the chairs again. I really, truly believe that, you know, God sat there and allowed Jonah to go through through this because the, the the truth of the matter is Kyle if there's two percent that's not right with you the Holy Spirit is loving he is good he's faithful he's going to give you opportunities to work on that two percent he's going to bring it right out to the forefront it's going to come up to the surface like a boil that you have on your skin what are you going to do about this what are you so he did this with Jonah Jonah listen you need to go dude why would you ask me to go to Nineveh they sit there and they desecrated your altars they sacrificed their kids to the the false gods on your altars they they sit there and they they killed the prophets they did all of these things these people do not need to hear the 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 your message of repentance these people need to fry like crispy sausages no jonah you don't understand i love them and i'm going to send my son to die for them just as i would send my son to die for everybody you need to be obedient to what i said and not let your anger and your hatred well you want to know what my time timer's going off, and I don't care. Um, the, 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 the thing of it is, is he had a choice to make. The Holy Spirit spoke to him. He had a choice to make. And the thing of it is, is he said, I'm not gonna. And did God give up on him? I'll stop it, because I know it's annoying. Okay, so... Did God give up on him when, when he said, no, I'm not doing it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go. Dad, I love what you say. You, you really are right. He doesn't give up on us. Because the fact of the matter is God could have said, you know what? You, you horrible. I have blessed you. I have given you. You are like famous because of me. You've got, and you know what? Yeah, I'm done with you. Hey, Lord, do you want us to John and, uh, and his brother? Hey, you want us to, to call down fire from heaven and toast these people? 
Um, no, I don't. I want you to go and love on them and tell them that they need to accept me in their lives. So Jonah hops on a boat, and God's not done with him. Gets eaten by the, does he repent with the storm? No. Does he repent when he gets swallowed up by the will? No. Does he repent? No, none of this stuff. And you know what? Sometimes, I mean, I'm stubborn. I have to, God's had to like correct me like 50 different times. But it comes down to authenticity. Do I really repent? Am I, I mean, crying out loud, um, my, my friend, Brian, you heard me say this only a million times. My friend would say, hey, let's go to Oliver's, this under-21 nightclub where girls wore skirts to here. Did you ever go to that nasty club? I hope not. You did? Sinful women. Sinful one. Hey, let's take her out back and stone her. All right? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I, man, that place is bad news. Am I right? Was that place bad news? Oh, my lands, that place was bad news. And yet, my friend would, would go there, my Catholic friend. No, I, won't, I digress. And he said, and, and, and I said, man, I, I should not go there. Dude, listen, I know, I know, oh, Christians aren't supposed to go to those kinds of places. Well, go to it. And then when you get back, just say a prayer when you go to bed. Lord, forgive me and stuff. He has to forgive you. You said that, right? He has to forgive you. So just do that. Was, it, was I playing mind games with God? Was I being sincere with my repentance? No. No, I wasn't. Not at all. And, and, and believe me, I, there's only been like 85,763 versions of that. I'm sure that happened in my life. Of like, you know, uh, I think, I'll, oh, but I can't really think that because he'll hear my thoughts and I'll do, okay, now I'm ready to repent, Lord. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Guys, I mean, it's, it's just lordship. This is lordship material. 